Hello, I am Karen Locke Culp. I am a parent coach and a child development expert. And I am so thrilled to be able to talk to you today about something that is extremely close to my heart. Um, a way of educating kids that I have seen have um, just beautiful results, not only with my own kids, but with the children of the parents that I work with, many of them. Um, and uh, on a wider scale, I've seen work for, for many, many, many children. Um, and that is the idea of self-directed learning. I I wanted to talk to you about um, sort of three areas of concentration that have to do with self-directed learning. It is some, first of all, it is something that is not fussy, it's not complex, it's not expensive. Um, in, in many cases, you can actually save money learning this way um, because it's not, it's, it's, it's choosing carefully and deliberately like what we spend our time on. And um, as I say, I have three areas I want to concentrate on. Uh, if you are the parent of a small child, a young child, that's one area. Um, I want to talk about older kids and maybe high schoolers. And then finally, I want to talk a little bit about us, the parents. <laughs> Um, so, so let me start off with, uh, with little. So how, how might we get self-directed learning into a, into a young child's life? And I think more importantly, why do we want self-directed learning in a young child's life? Um, and the, the ideas that come up for me with the why have to do with, um, self-directed learning for young children literally is play. Uh, any time we can be encouraging just open-ended, simple play in our child's life, that is really, really what we want to do. Um, this is where my area of expertise actually is. I've got a master's degree in early childhood education and I've got um, bachelor's degrees in human, well, a bachelor degree that is in human development and family relations. And so I know about this from kind of a developmental perspective. Uh, and I remember as a preschool teacher, I used to be asked all the time, like, what, um, what, you know, uh, I don't, I don't want to worry about all this other kind of like squishy stuff. I just want to teach my kid how to read. Can't you just teach my child their numbers? Can't you just teach them how to read? Lots of concerns from parents when their kids, kids weren't reading at, you know, in a sort of a preschool age or like that they didn't have the formation of numbers and those sorts of things. And what I said every time uh, and what I've now seen in my own family is, and of course with the people that I work with, um, these things come up naturally in play. And at the time that it is right for our kids to be learning about these things like reading and mathematics, the sort of three R's, that is, that is when we do start to see them in their play. And we see them much earlier than we think. Um, you know, there's a lot that goes into reading before a child actually learns to kind of decode uh, print. There is, there's the, the sort of being immersed in an environment with lots of writ written printed messages, right? Or um, being able to be read to and then um, playing rhyming games and other things with, with, uh, with words. Um, in my home growing up, there was music all the time. Not a surprise, my mother um, is, a, is a singer. She actually once sang for the Pope, <laughs> little known fact. Um, she actually sang a solo for the Pope once um, in, in Vatican City, which was pretty cool. Um, and so in our home, there was a ton of music. And um, when I was raising my kids, that got incorporated into our home. My husband's a musician, my kids are now musicians, I'm a singer. Um, and as a result, like we, we had entire conversations that were really super playful and they were in singing. They were in song. Like, I, you know, it would be singing about coming to the breakfast table or it would be singing about cleaning up. All these little ways of play that, um, that became self-directed learning. Uh, and, and when I think about my kids, they're, they're young adults now and a lot of their, um, music and, and musicianship came directly from, it is still playful for them, which is why they do it. And, um, it came directly from play as children. So, I um, I can't overemphasize how important play is for young children. And 
I can also say that, you know, when, when we do see open-ended play, I'm, I'm talking about screen-free open-ended play, I, sh I should mention. Um, when, we, when we bring screens in, it's, it doesn't become the same kind of quality of play. So we're talking about open-ended play with other people, by themselves, with um, even reading to themselves is a kind of open-ended play, right? Looking at books, um, playing with stuffed friends, uh, playing with water in the sink <laughs> like it can really there's a lot of really super open-ended activities that are that, that constitute play and that's what little children need um that is how we can understand what they're thinking about what's on their mind a lot of times uh things that, that trouble them come out naturally in play and that's a very great way for children to play through their concerns and stresses um so littles are you know it's so 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 important for little children to get play in their lives and uh, that is self-directed learning when you're very young. When you're a little older, I would say that self-directed learning is still a playful thing, um, but it naturally becomes more sophisticated and it, it naturally sort of moves into learning. So uh, both of my kids, one went to and one is still going to a self-directed learning center um, for, it's a, it's a kind of alternative school where the classes are non-coercive and the, um, meaning you, you only go to the classes that you really want to go to. And boy, do we see investment in those classes because they really, they love what they're learning about. It turns them on. Um, you do not have to go to a special school to be a self-directed learner. I, I wanna say that um, lots of children, lots of young adults, lots of high school age students get these uh, either by homeschooling, by belonging to co-ops, by taking time after school um, on weekends. In, in our current, in our current, where, how we're all doing this today, which is, or many of us are, it's, it's hybrid learning right now, it's virtual learning, so they're not actually in school. A lot of times that frees kids up to go and, um, and do their own, what they're interested in, either between classes or you know, after the school day is over, they don't have a long bus ride home or something like that. So they can, they can, um, they can do these things more on their own and, and really uh, become invested in what they want to learn about. And I mean, I have seen in my coaching practice, I have seen with my children's friends and with my own kids, um, this can be anything from like cooking, drawing, going out in nature, um, playing musical instruments uh, and dropping them and, and choosing other musical instruments and, um, and creating video games and, and playing Dungeons and Dragons with friends. All of these things incorporate real learning that takes investment but um, it has so much more meaning for, for kids than, um, than the stuff that, that somebody else is asking them to learn about. And so I, I guess I'm asking you to be a little bit open to that idea. I know for many it's a new, new idea. It can seem a little bit scary, um, but it may be a great direction for your older child to, to kind of go in. And finally, I want to uh, talk about us, the grown-ups. It is crucial to have some self-directed learning in our own lives for our own health and safety. Um, for us, self-directed learning can be, so for me, I am currently obsessed with knitting. Uh, I'm, I'm learning, well, I've been an obsessed knitter for a very long time, and I'm currently, uh, I'm focused on knitting socks that I will actually wear one day. And part of this is because in the pandemic, my favorite kind of socks that I used to get for like $4 a pair, um, I can't find them at any price and I've only realized how important it is like if you're a skier for example like me the good merino wool socks are are, um, are key I mean like you have a much better experience skiing when you're in socks that aren't uh, uncomfortable or tight or wet or something like that um, and so knitting socks has become like a total obsession of mine and it's a blast it, it is self-directed learning um, I, I once interviewed on my podcast um, a man named Charlie Hone, whose, whose life uh, had been really stunted by the fact that he didn't get any play at all. He, he existed to work, and he worked himself almost to death. And uh, eventually went on to write a book called Play It Away, where he talks about the importance of play in recovering his, uh, his, his whole life. I mean, he was really... Uh, you know, really depressed, really anxious, really unable to kind of keep going in his life until one day a friend of his invited him out to go and play catch at the park. 
and it just sparked for him a whole bunch of self-directed learning um, and knowledge about himself. He needs play to live. And I submit to you that so do we all need play to live. And um, I really hope that this presentation has been helpful for you in thinking about, I just want to kind of open that door a little bit towards the idea of self-directed learning. I know it can be a very, uh, it's, it's unconventional to say the least, especially in our society where so much is focused on grades and um, kind of checklists of having things done in a certain order. Self-directed learning is not like that at all. Um, that is all, that's one reason that it's terrifying, but it's, it can also be so wonderful if you can open yourself up to it. Um, so thank you so much for watching. I am, uh, I've written, my most recent book is called Educating Happy Kids and I would love to offer it to you, uh, the ebook e uh, of it, the PDF, completely free of charge. Um, just email me, karen at weturnedoutokay.com and um, ask for it and I will send it to you. And um, I really hope that you enjoy it. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. You can also email me with any questions you've got. Um, just want to be helpful. And uh, I think that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I, I really hope this has been helpful and I wish you well. Bye.